Hey guys, welcome to the next video in this set in this unit for conformational analysis of alkanes. This time we're going to be going over constitutional isomers, and there's going to be a couple videos for this series. And so let's first start off with the definition of what an isomer is. All right, so not necessarily anything, not necessarily a constitutional isomer. So an isomer is a, is a molecule that has well, isomers of molecules are molecules with the same formula, but they have distinct st structures, all right? And there's multiple types of isomers. There's stereoisomers, constitutional isomers, but we're only going to be going over the one type today. And so isomers don't necessarily have to share the same properties, all right? And so now let's go into what a constitutional isomer is. So constitutional isomer is our two molecules who have the same exact formula, but they're different in how they're connected. So I'll start off with an example. Let's start out with hexane, all right? So if you know nomenclature naming, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So I'm just gonna write C6, and let's count the hydrogens. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, okay? So we have 14 hydrogens here and six carbons. So I'm just gonna erase these little hydrogens here. All right, and so this is hexane. And so how would we draw a constitutional isomer of hexane? Well, I'll just tell you guys my strategy. When I uh, did the stuff for the exam one and orgo one, what I usually just did is I picked one carbon and I essentially just moved it. So I'm just gonna pick one carbon on the end. I find it's easier to pick one of the carbons coming, um, one of the terminal carbons, the end carbons, and I'm just gonna move it. And so I'll take carbon six. So I like to draw all the carbons except carbon six. One, two, three, four, five, and I'll just move it essentially a distance of one carbon over, or actually kind of two, because it's carbon six is already connected to carbon five. And so what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it on carbon four. All right. So here's our carbon six. And if you guys wanna name that one, just to get some extra practice, maybe pause the video and stop it here, because I'm gonna name it in a second. All right, and so to name it, we have uh, our longest chain is five carbons. And so this is going to be uh, pentane as the root. And we have a methyl coming off of carbon four, but in reality, if we, because we wanna minimize the naming of substituents, we can number it going this way. And so it's actually coming off the two carbon. So it's gonna be two methyl pentane. All right, and so now that we have one isomer, let's try to go on to another isomer, okay? So, so to continue with my strategy, I like to just keep moving one carbon, only one space, until I essentially cannot do anything by only moving one carbon. So I'll show you what that means. So here's what we can do. I can take this carbon and I can move it one of two places at this point, the carbon six. If I move it here, we're essentially just gonna get this molecule, all right? That's gonna be the same exact thing as this one, just flipped. So that's not, an, uh, that's not a constitutional isomer. If you did that on the test as two separate structures, you get a point off, all right? So where we can move it is we can move it right there. And also note, I'm not drawing curved arrows. The arrows that you see me drawing in this video are not curved arrows. I'm just trying to illustrate where I'm moving everything. All right, and so what that would look like is this. So if we number it, we get one, two, three, four, five, and here's our carbon six. All right, and so let's see if we can move that one carbon anywhere else. Well, if we moved it here at the carbon two, we'd have this structure. And if we moved it to carbon one, we'd again have literally, essentially this structure, right? Just again, flipped. So we've exhausted all the possible things we could do with that one carbon. So now we need to find, we need to move another carbon. All right, so again, I like to just take one right off the end. So I'm gonna take that carbon five, okay? 
And this is just pretty much my strategy. I just keep removing carbons from the terminal side until I just can't do anything else anymore. And so this carbon five, where can I move it? So this one right here. So it's already connected to carbon four. So it's not like I can remove it and reattach it to that carbon four. And I can't move it to that carbon one because it's going to be the same exact thing. Where I can move it is I can move it to carbon two. So I'm going to move it right over there. And so this is going to look like, here's our carbon six. So let's number those first. Two, three, four, six. And then our carbon five will go there. So that's number five. So where else can we move it? Well, let's see. We can't move that carbon. Uh, we can't really remove a terminal carbon at this point just because there isn't anywhere else to put it. But what we can do is we can now take this carbon number five right here and we can put it connected to that carbon number three. And I'll show you what that's going to look like. So here's our carbon one, two, three, and four. This is carbon six, and that's carbon five, all right? And so, yeah, you can move two different atoms onto the same carbon. But remember, the, the definition of a constitutional isomer is that it has to have the same formula. So let's go through all of these, and let's just see if our formula is uh, correct, okay? So let's count up all the hydrogens. We have six, we need six carbons and 14 hydrogens for this to be correct. So let's start here. We have six carbons, so that's good. Now let's look at our hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Because there's too many bonds, so it can only have one hydrogen there, so that's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. All right, so that works. Let's go on to this one. See, make clean it up a bit. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That works. Now let's move on to this structure. We're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Alright, that checks out. And now the last one over here. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. No hydrogens there. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. All right. So all of these structures check out in terms of the number of carbons and hydrogens, and so that means they're all constitutional isomers. Now let's see. Can is there anything else that we can actually do? Is there any other isomers that we can make? Are there any isomers we can make? Well. Let's look, if I move this over there, we'd essentially have the same thing as that. Um, yeah, so once you reach the point where you cannot, where anytime you move another atom, you're going to get the same structure of, that you've already had, that is that means you're done. You ha can't find any more isomers of them. And so in terms of how many uh, constitutional isomers we have of hexane, we have one, two, three, four and five. All right, so there are five total constitutional isomers of hexane. In the next video, we're going to get uh, into a more complicated examples. And then the one after that, I'm going to show you guys a quick little trick into ha how to figure out, how to get an idea of what, a, um, essentially just to get an idea of what your constitutional isomers should look like. It's called the IHD formula. All right, and so I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know if something here didn't make sense. Feel free to email me or uh, ask a TA. We'd be happy to answer your questions. And uh, see you in the next video.